Joining me now is filmmaker and journalist Ami Horowitz. Ami, let's start with President Joe Biden. He made a huge call on the Gaza conflict while eating ice cream with late night TV host Seth Meyers. Have a look. Can you give us a sense of when you think that ceasefire will start, sir? Well, I hope by the beginning of the weekend. I mean, the end of the weekend. At least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. It's not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday we'll have a ceasefire. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Army, uh, does that fill you with confidence? Well, first of all, he was eating Van Leeuwen ice cream, which is uh, overpriced, overhyped hipster ice cream, which I can't stand. Uh, second of all, <laughs> if you we wound that tape just a few seconds, he was talking with his mouth full, so gross, and I love Minship ice cream. I think he's yeah, ruined it for Yeah, that's gross. Him. Look, it's, it's the, yes, of course, there's, some, there's a callousness involved when you're talking about a ceasefire with a war going on between Gaza and Israel. Um, but I think it's also, it's really mostly, yes, the, the, the callousness is so tone deaf. He is in a dogfight across the country, in particular Michigan, which has a quarter of a million Arabs. I mean, Michigan voted, at, at, at this point, they're, they're supporting Biden at 17%, down from 40%, in a state where there's the swingiest of the swing states. And, and the Arab population in Georgia and Pennsylvania, two more really important states, uh, the population, the Arab population makes up, it's a larger population than his margin of victory. So just tone deaf in terms of dealing with a situation that has already been a significant drag and prompt for him in the polls. So, yeah, it didn't seem to make much sense to, to handle it that way. Ami, he also, in between mouthfuls of ice cream, talked about visiting the southern border. That's where his administration has lost complete control. More than 7 million have come in illegally during that time. Let's have a listen. I've been planning to go Thursday. What I didn't know is uh, my good friend apparently is gone. And will you meet with migrants while you're there, Mr. President? Well, I'm not going to announce ahead of time. Secret Service doesn't like me announcing exactly what I'm Army is uh, referring there to Trump going to the border as well. Uh, is he going to now delay his trip because Trump is visiting the southern border? Well, first of all, I, I'm, I'll take I'll I'll take your word for what he said. I couldn't understand a word of what that guy was saying in that clip. God, he's barely with us these days. <laughs> Um, does it matter, really? It, there's, Rita, there's nothing he could do at this point to salvage his standing when it comes to the American people on the border. He can delay. He can go. It doesn't matter. It all looks performative. Like, he's showing up now. The, the Americans understand what's going on. He's just doing a dance because he is, he is so underwater on the single most important issue facing our country today. The most important issue by polling data that people care about is immigration and the border. He is down by seven. It's like 70, 30, Rita. And the, the 30 people clearly have brain mm. damage. So it doesn't matter what he's doing. It clearly <laughs> looks as if nobody's buying it. Um, with you there, and I think that's reflected in the latest polling we're seeing. Uh, Emerson and The Hill polling uh, shows that in the crucial swing states, well, they are all swinging towards Trump. Let's have a look at this data. He's up by 10 in Nevada. Wisconsin is up by 4. Michigan, 3. Pennsylvania, 5. North Carolina, up by 9. Also 9 in Georgia and 6 in Arizona. This is when uh, against Biden, when Kennedy, Stein and West uh, are counted. Uh, when it's just Trump versus Biden, he's still gaining across the board. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not surprising that when you look at the bookmakers, he's a clear favourite. I mean, with the Australian bookmakers, he's $2. Uh, is this momentum, can this momentum be stopped? I know we're a long way away and a lot can happen. But it's hard to see Nikki Haley prevailing. It looks like Trump is the candidate. And if these polls hold, he's going to win again.
Yeah, um, uh, when it comes to uh, Trump versus Haley, no, that's, that's a foregone conclusion. When it comes to the polls shifting and the amount of time we have, I mean, look, if I had to put money on it with those bookmakers, I'd put it on Trump. But the Republicans are doing their darndest to, um, to screw it up, whether it comes with, with IVF, <laughs> when it comes to abortion, uh, e even this, this congressional, insane congressional plan to, to, to shut down the country. So, yes, it could change. But right now, everything is trending toward Trump. Trump has a positive approval rating. He is at almost 60 percent with the United States having a positive approval of his presidency, his past presidency. But if you really break down the numbers and look at those core demographics that are so important to Biden, the Hispanic vote and the black vote, 40 percent of black people have a positive view on, on Trump as president. When, remember, he only got 8 percent of the vote with Hispanics. 57% approve of his presidency, his last presidency, and he only got 38% of the vote. These are numbers that are very hard to overcome, particularly because that is your core constituency. I mean, he's actually almost dead even with young voters, 18 to 38. That's when he trounced Trump on. If you're not going to win young voters, you are not going to win. And then if you, if you go down to more granular level and look at all the key issues, Biden is underwater in all of those key issues. So as it stands now, man, he's got a, he's got tough sledding to win this thing. That's astonishing. That is just mind blowing that you got those figures coming back from black voters, Hispanic voters, young people. That I think that is absolutely <laughs> frightening the Democrats because these are just demos that they expect to be backing them and backing them in huge numbers and particularly when you look at the black vote because that is such a solid voting block it, it always goes for the democrats around 90 percent uh if that fractures a little bit and and trump manages to get a slice of that what could that mean that that completely changes the landscape army it means president trump that's what it means it means get ready for another four years of president trump <laughs> Well, brace yourself. Now, before you go, I want to ask you about this Ivy League professor who claimed to be Native American, been uncovered to be a, another fake, shades of Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren to it. And just like Warren, much of the leftist media is uh, insisting it was all just a terrible mistake. They're saying Elizabeth Hoover didn't lie about her race. She was lied to about it, but she called herself Wind Chaser and a descendant of the Mohawk and Micmac tribes. Uh, she wore feathers in her hair for her college photo. Uh, so, I Army, mean, why did she never bother to check to see if this ethnicity was actually genuine? Oh, yeah, I love when you give yourself your own Native American nickname. I want to be called the Slim Reaper. That's a cool name. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what... Why did she bother to check, Rita? Because she said herself, she talked about all the advantages that she got in the workplace because she identified as Native American. She didn't want to check. She didn't want to know. Look, you know you're not a racist country when people are trying to identify as minorities, right? If you're Rachel Dolezal <laughs> identifying true. as a black person or you're Pocahontas identifying as a Native American or as Professor Hoover as well, like, you know we're out of problems when people are looking to identify as, as minorities. And, you know, it's so interesting. Um, yeah, look, if you can identify uh, your, change your sex, right, identify as any sex you want, which, by the way, is far more determinative, sex is, than race. Race is meaningless, ultimately. Why can't you self-identify as a black person or a Hispanic person or an Asian person? I don't know why you couldn't if you could do it with your sex. So, um, yeah, that's where you are, the state of the world Good these point. days, Rita. Good point. Army, uh, you make an excellent point there. I think maybe in a few years you will be able to. It will all be meaningless. Uh, Army Horowitz, thank you so much for your time this evening.